Stress Truck. Hey, welcome back to Stress Truck Plays Robotruck, and I finally figured out that this lock actually unlocked that door, but it relocked, and now I have to fight these things to be able to unlock it, but at least they each left 200 gold pieces for me, so, and yeah, that subsequently unlocks the door. Hooray. So, yeah, this clock tower can be pretty confusing because this is one of those dungeons where everything looks exactly the same. Those, those runes with the switches in it all look exactly the same. They all appear the same. I haven't been in here yet. It's just a cure, big deal. It's kind of one of the flaws in the game where uh, there isn't much in terms of like items or anything like that that are too extravagant, at least not yet. Not that I haven't covered that, like cures and repairs. It's, it's all stuff you can buy in stores for, for nothing. So, okay, we've got a locked door here. If we go in this room, this room looks exactly like the other rooms that have the switches. Not even going to bother reading what nonsense is on that plaque, but that unlocks that door right there. So let's go through here and up the stairs. And there's yet another switch. Let's read what this is. Okay, this is the whatchacamacallit's room. The doll's room, I guess. And, uh... Uh... Oh boy. So there's six dolls, not just one. This is like that episode of Garfield and Friends when he was torturing John and it turned out there were three Garfields. Hey, he just kicked me out of the room. <laughs> I don't understand why this game does that or it's just, it kicks you out and you can just go back in. Like what purpose does that serve? Oh no, it's afraid of mice. Okay. So. Oh, it's paying me back for saving its kid, I guess. Okay. So let's go fight this doll thing. Oh, wait a minute. We don't do that yet. What's, is there anything over here? No. What do we do? Well, there's a ledge over there. We climb down these chains. We go all the way down. Where does this go? And nothing over here, just this door. Better check over here. Yes, I'm one of those, in case you haven't, can't tell yet, I'm one of those anal people to the point that I'm gonna climb this chain over here since, you know, the programmers decided to put it over here. Let's see what's over here. And the answer is, Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Uh, I mean, I can't even get to that thing, whatever it is that's in there. Oh, well. Oh, right, yeah, what I want to do here is uh, save real quick. And you can do that with the transceiver. But you can only do that in certain areas. Like, for example, if I go back in this room... and try it uh, right here in front of the boss door, it'll say it's too noisy and you can't hear the receiver. So that, I don't, you know, whatever. Let's put the uh, the relay back on and let's uh, flip the switch to open the door. And since that is a sinister looking logo on the, before the uh, door there, that must imply that there is a boss fight forthcoming. And it's... This doll is apparently addicted to the power of this Tetron stuff. And uh, it's frozen this uh, hacker thing. Uh-oh. It's boss time, yes. And it's a giant fucking bee. Or a yeah, wasp or a... Not a yellow jacket, but a pink jacket. And this is a confusing boss fight, as if everything else in this game weren't confusing enough. Um, yeah, I don't expect Larry to last very long here. 
But yeah, it splits into three, and it's just like that Star Fox boss battle against uh, Fan Fantron or whatever its name was. All right, I'll just guard here since I can't reach him. Where you have to pick out the right boss or the right uh, thing here, um, and differentiate it between the clones. And Larry is dead. Here comes Leonard. First thing I'm going to have him do is revive Larry, just in case Leonard somehow gets taken down. You do that with a repair from the item menu. And now, obviously, Leonard's not going to do nearly as much damage as Larry. This boss battle might take a while, though. Not going not gonna to lie. I have no idea which one is real, because the f even the fake ones take the same amount of damage. Unless you shoot a bomb like that. That was pretty pathetic. Oh, boy. So, let's just... Yeah. Okay, even his strongest attack only yields one damage. Okay, that was obviously a fake. So, the real one must either be in the top or the bottom. Let's go and take care of the top one. That one's obviously a fake. And we've at least got the real one narrowed down on the screen here and let you always want to go behind him any opportunity you get oh well that didn't last long hopefully he stayed in the middle <laughs> let's take this thing out while we're down here and yeah I would recommend just using the single hack and not the um, not the not any sort of combos or programs oh wow I guess uh the real one didn't have very many hit points, or whatever. 50 megs of data, holy shit. So we're gonna, yeah, climb a level, at least one. I think that's two levels, actually. I think I was at a level 11 beforehand. Um, so yeah, let's uh, allocate these points accordingly. We want to uh, just increase the strengths of each one, and I guess increase some power, too, just to make... Uh, well, uh, battles a little, you know, boss battles a little more uh, manageable. You know what? Yeah, I did go up 20 points. Let's go back to uh, Leonard here. He should have 10 more points. Might as well give it to uh, Guard and uh, Charge. Accentuate strengths. Don't worry about the weaknesses. With with one of your robots, I should say. That's my advice. Whereas you want to keep the other one kind of sort of balanced. Or at least... Uh, slanted towards uh, power so he can at least get some really strong attacks in before he gets toasted like you just saw. And that's it for the doll. Now it's just a regular doll that contains stone too. So yeah, now we have two pieces of Tetron so far. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. And yeah, this guy can move. Congratulations. <laughs> to look for the simple life. Good for you. Hey, it's Mint. She's waiting for me. Or she's spying on me, rather. <laughs> well, she managed to exit a room without running into a wall for once. Hey, it's these guys. What do you want? <laughs> Finally, this house will have the right time. It's, a, it's like, oh yeah, this is a clock tower. I guess their priority would be to have the correct time in a clock tower. Imagine that. Hey, it's Flavor Flavon. How you doing? Yes, I did. And that's where the game actually does you a favor and teleports you out of that dungeon so you don't have to backtrack your way out. I always love when games do that. Thank you, game. Yeah, you, this has been established. It's okay. You were looking for the stuff. But it's uh, flashback time here. There's uh, my character's dad, Dr. Akibara. Well, maybe he should have brought some robots with him, like I did. You ever think of that, Dad? Uh. <laughs> uh. 
Okay. So, Flavon just goes away. And there's a cutaway. Well, anything can happen in a cutaway. And they're gone. I heard a few surprise no horn noises. Did he use the surprise horn on him? Yeah. Flavon likes using uh, ellipses, evidently. So yeah, back to present day. Well, you're really old and you probably lost sight of him because, you know, you're old and you probably lose your glasses and your dentures and whatever else all the time. Yes, that's right. Making stereotypical old guy jokes. That's all you're going to say? All right. We're going to call this an episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.